بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ٹیچرز آئی ایم راشد سلیم ود لیکچر نمبر تھرٹین آف فنکشنل انگلش ون ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو شیئر لائف ایکسپیرینسز یس اٹس ون آف دا کامن فنکشنس کامن اسپیچ فنکشنس دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو پرفارم اسپیشلی پیپل لائک می ہو ہیو اسپینٹ لاٹ مینی ایئرس who are already middle-aged, they have plenty of experiences to share. Uh, but even the younger kids, uh, they like to share whatever they have experienced. Probably it is human nature uh, that whatever we have learned, whatever we have done, whatever we have seen, we often want to talk about it. We often want to share it with our parents, with our friends, with our colleagues, etc. So this lesson lecture is really very important because uh, it will help you share your personal and life experiences. But before we move on, let's have a quick recap of what we learned in lecture number 12. In lecture 12, we learned how to summarize a story. So we looked at various stories, short stories, fictional narratives, rather I should call them. And we learned what are the main elements of a story, such as setting, characters, dialogues, problem, and its solution. Or in other words, you can call them conflict and its resolution. Uh, so once we looked at the main elements of a story, it became easier for us to summarize them in our own words. We also learned how to determine important ideas and information. Uh, summary writing involves restating main ideas. And, uh, but how to determine what ideas are main, what events are main, and uh, what information is crucial. Uh, we learned about that. Then we also learned how to narrate events in a sequence. Uh, in fiction, it is very important the way you tell the tale. The sequence or the way you organize events is really important. Just imagine what will happen to a story if you start telling it from the ending. Uh, it will mar all its suspense. So narrating events in a sequence is really important, both for the storyteller as well as uh, for the people who are summarizing it. And in the end, you also learned how to retell a story in your own words. So this is what we learned in lecture number 12. We move on and we see what we are going to learn in today's lecture, in lecture number 13. After completing lecture number 13, you should be able to share life experiences. So this is the main objective that we are going to achieve at the end of today's lecture. Uh, but in order to fulfill that objective, we need some sub-skills. And we need, to, uh, we need to learn some grammar. For example, uh, in this lecture, you are going to learn how to use simple past tense for narrating past events. In fact, you have already looked at it. Uh, when we were talking about stories, we were telling how to narrate past events. And uh, you were unconsciously using simple past tense. Today's main focus is actually going to be on use of present perfect tense for experiences. And in the end, we will uh, differentiate between the two tenses, between simple past tense and present perfect tense. Very often, we confuse these two tenses. And since both the tenses talk about past events in a way, uh, sometimes it is difficult to choose between the two. But today we will learn some uh, techniques and some tips that will help you to appropriately use these two tenses. Remember, uh, prior to this lecture, we have not been focusing on grammar much. We have 
slightly touched on some grammatical points. Uh, the reason is because we are learning functional English and in functional English we will only look at the functional aspects of grammar or you might call it functional grammar. So we won't study the theoretical details. Instead we will focus on what functions various tenses perform. Uh, and of course we will also look at the structure but we will uh, mainly focus or emphasize on how to use that structure, how to employ that structure in our real speech or in our piece of writing. So uh, after completing this lecture, you will be able to share your life experiences and in the meantime, you will also learn how to use past simple tense, how to use present perfect tense, and how to combine both or how to differentiate between the two tenses. So are you ready? Okay, I would like to begin with my own life experiences. Well, uh, I have done and seen and eaten and visited lots of places and lots of things. Uh, but I will just talk about few. For example, I have lived in various cities of Sindh and Punjab. So this is one of my life experience. I have lived in various cities of Sindh and Punjab. I've been to China and the United States. I've co-authored National English Curriculum for class 1 to 12. I've learned French for 8 months. Actually, I completed four levels of French. I've taught Chinese to university teachers. So I taught a short course in survival Chinese to university teachers who were interested to go to China and um, uh, for exchange programs, to go to China for exchange programs. Okay, and one of the interesting things that I've done in my life is that I have gone bungee jumping. Some of you might know what bungee jumping is, but those of you who don't know, let me explain. Bungee jumping is a kind of jumping. Uh, so we have a high platform such as uh, maybe 100 meters high or maybe even more. And uh, we jump from a high platform while an elastic rope is tied to our feet. So once you jump into the air, uh, you are upside down and your feet are tied with an elastic rope. Because it is an elastic rope, you keep on going down and up. So maybe uh, you go down and up for three, four times and finally they, they let you come down and um, maybe you have watched it on television. Uh, it is one of the exciting sports. Uh, apparently it looks pretty dangerous, uh, but I won't say really it is uh, dangerous. Rather, I would say it is adventurous. So uh, maybe uh, this is one thing that I, uh, I, I like, I often like to share with my colleagues that I have gone bungee jumping. I've translated some poems of Sylvia Plath into Urdu. Uh, maybe you know Sylvia Plath is, um, is an English poetess and uh, not very easy to understand and I have translated some of her poems into Urdu. In fact, I've also translated poems of Robert Frost and Philip Larkin. Okay, uh, I've already told you that I've been to China. So, uh, wh what did I do in China that I would like to share with you? One thing is I visited the Great Wall of China. And you know, uh, it's one of the wonders of the world. And uh, so, I have visited the Great Wall of China. And finally, if I uh, want to 
share my professional experience with you. Uh, a remarkable achievement that I've made is that I have developed a website for my students. So uh, these are few experiences from my life that I wanted to share with you. And uh, uh, you must have noticed one thing that while I was experiencing, while, uh, while I was narrating my experiences, I have used the same grammatical structure. If you just look at this, I've lived, I've been, I've co-authored, I've learned, I've taught, I've gone, I've translated, I've visited, and I've developed. You would see that I'm using have, the short form of have, I've, uh, and that is, so I'm using the same structure in order to share my experiences. Okay, so this is uh, a list of some experiences uh, from my own life. But these are not merely examples. These are experiences that are from uh, my life. These are real experiences, not uh, the fake ones. Okay, now it is your turn. So let me ask you a simple question. What's your professional experience? Yeah, uh, by professional experience, I mean uh, experience that is related to your profession. Uh, all of you are teachers, so teaching is your profession. Uh, I would like you to share your professional experience. This is important. Uh, you know, when we appear in an interview, often we have to talk about the things that we have done, the experiences that we have uh, made. Uh, and very often we have to talk about these areas, for example, qualification. So uh, try to think of some sentences that describe your professional experience regarding your qualification. For example, if you have done MA in education, you might call it, you might say that I have done masters in education. I have uh, done BA in education. Uh, okay, similarly you can say uh, I have done uh, I have done masters in in psychology or in physics. Okay, then you can also talk about the short courses that you have completed. For example, you can say I have uh, I have completed a short diploma in computer skills. I have uh, completed a short course in Arabic language or I have completed a short uh, course in, uh, in education. Okay, then you can talk about your professional experience. And uh, once again, you can say, I have taught for 10 years, I have taught for 15 years, I have uh, taught primary school kids, I have taught secondary school kids, I have taught in a university, so you can uh, mention whatever professional experience you have got. Then in the end, if you have any remarkable achievements or awards, like uh, I have achieved, I have got the best teacher award, I have, uh, uh, I have got uh, the best teacher award, or I have uh, got grade A in my, uh, in my diploma, okay? So uh, using I have and then third form of the verb, you can actually talk about your professional experiences. And uh, this will help you in your interviews and especially when you are talking about your professional experience. Once you have done that, uh, you can also think of your own life experiences and uh, your personal experiences, just like the ones that I shared earlier. You can also think of the things that you have done, you have seen, you have visited, uh, you have eaten, you have cooked. I mean, uh, any experiences that are worth sharing. Okay, now, in order to do some practice, we move on, 
and I'm going to ask you a question that starts with the question structure, question phrase, have you ever? Uh, so I'm going to ask you questions with have you ever? Uh, ever here means that even for a single time in your life. So ex uh, for example, if I say, have you ever seen a live puppet show? Have you ever seen a live puppet show? This means, uh, uh, do you have an experience of seeing or watching a live puppet show, uh, even for a single time in your life? So uh, what are we going to do? We are going to start our questions with, have you ever? And then we are going to complete this question by looking at these prompts here. And these prompts have got two sections in it. Uh, the verbs are written in brackets. And I want you to use the third form of the verb here because that's the form that goes with have you ever. Uh, that is the form that we use in present perfect. So you should say have you ever seen a live puppet show? And then there should be a question mark. I didn't put a question mark here because actually you are going to fill in these dots with these uh, uh, phrases. So the question mark is already there. And uh, then you are also going to think uh, about the answer to it. So your answer could be, short answer could be, yes, I have, if you have experienced it. Otherwise, you would say, no, I haven't. Um, this is pretty useful, so I would like you to use it as a practice situation also. So once you have understood it, uh, you can actually use these prompts to ask questions from your colleagues, from your friends, and they can simply answer it by saying, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And then you can request your colleagues to ask you similar questions, and you can respond by saying, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And in fact, these prompts are just few. It's not an exhaustive list. You can add to this list. In fact, you can think of some uh, unique experiences, some interesting uh, events or some interesting sports, some interesting events or life experiences. OK, um, let me ask you these questions first. Have you ever seen a live puppet show? OK, uh, now I don't know how many of you have actually seen a live puppet show. Maybe you watched it on television. Probably all of you watched it on television. But my question is, have you ever seen a live puppet show? Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. OK, have you ever cooked biryani? Yeah. I'm sure that all of you have eaten biryani, but my question is, have you ever cooked biryani? Have you ever been to Karachi? Maybe some of you are from Karachi, and uh, some of you have been to Karachi. Have you ever ridden a camel? And you can replace a camel here, you can uh, say, a donkey, a horse, a mule, an elephant, anything that you, you want to uh, mention here. So, uh, so how many of you have ridden a camel? Okay. Uh, we move on and uh, I, I would also like to ask you, have you ever killed a snake? Have you ever killed a snake? Yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Have you visited abroad? Uh, abroad means outside the country. So if you have been to any foreign countries, uh, you may ask this question. Have you ever visited abroad? Have you ever played flute? You know, flute is a musical instrument, a wind musical instrument that you play with your uh, mouth. You blow your, uh, your breath into it and you f create music. So have you ever played flute? Of course, you can change the word flute here. You can write piano, piano guitar, 
or any other musical instrument or it doesn't even have to be a musical instrument you can even think of uh, any sports anything that is that can be played okay have you ever swum in a river yeah a very dangerous thing to do but I'm sure some of you would say yes I have to this question uh, because especially people who live near the rivers uh, in, in small towns and villages uh, they usually have this experience of swimming in a river okay have you ever performed Hajj instead of Hajj you can also say Umrah have you ever written a poem yes I written a poem either in English or Urdu or Punjabi or Saraiki or Sindhi or Brahvi whatever language you speak have you ever told a lie now very often I give these prompts to my students in the class I divide the class into pairs and I ask them to go through these questions and ask them uh, alternatively for example student A asks question with the first prompt and student B asks question that starts with the second prompt and once they have completed it I ask them to prepare their own prompts and ask more questions this one is really very interesting because uh, some of the students say no I haven't no I haven't told a lie or yes I have told a lie uh, it is interesting because those who say I haven't told a lie uh, probably it is a lie itself okay we move on have you ever flown a kite okay um, so use it as a practice situation use these prompts uh, why, uh, in order to practice have you ever and yes I have no I haven't and uh, if you are an English teacher you can actually use these prompts and similar prompts in your own language classes alright uh, now let's have a look at the structure of present perfect tense so far we have been focusing on the function of present perfect tense and you remember I talked about my personal life experiences and I used present perfect tense for that and then I asked you to give your professional experience and again you are supposed to give your professional experience in present perfect tense and uh, just in the previous slide we learned how to uh, ask the question have you ever um, and again this question is in present perfect tense and its answer is also in present perfect tense when you say yes I have or no I haven't so right now let's have a look at the structure present perfect tense uh, is formed in this way first of all you have the subject plus have or has you know uh, with I we you and they uh, and the plural forms of subject we use have and with he she and it and singular uh, subjects we use has so he has and we have then we use the third form of the verb <coughs> we also call it past participle or the third form of the verb uh, and then um, we may or may not have an object at the end of the sentence I've written it here in the bracket because this is optional so there may or may not be an object in a sentence uh, let's have a look at the example he has won many awards so in this sentence he is the subject has is the helping verb one is the third form of win and many awards is an object so when we make a statement or a positive sentence in present perfect tense this is the structure that we use and the example sentence could be he has won many awards break lenge yahan par 
जी वापस आते हैं एंड द एग्जाम्पल सेंटेंस कोड बी ही हैज वन मैनी अवार्ड ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज द नेगेटिव फॉर्म ऑफ प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट टेंस यू ओनली नीड टू एड नॉट बिटवीन द हेल्पिंग वर्ब हैज और हैव एंड द थर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्ब सो इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग ही हैज वन मैनी अवार्ड यू विल से ही हैज नॉट वन मैनी अवार्ड और हियर आई हैव गिवन द एग्जाम्पल दे हैव नॉट इनफॉर्म्ड अस दे हैव नॉट informed us so i have put the word not between have and informed the helping verb have and the third form of the verb inform uh it is very common to use the short form so instead of saying they have not informed us we use they haven't informed us haven't haven't is the short form for have not and what's the short form for has not yes you guessed it right it is he hasn't 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 is the short form for has not uh very often in speech uh in oral speech we use hasn't and haven't instead of have not and has not okay then we move on to the questions and uh this is how you can form a question you will use the has or have part in the beginning you will invert the sentence in other words you will use uh, the helping verb before the subject right so has have will come before the subject rather than after it so you'll say like have you seen him lately have you seen him lately lately means Yes you are right lately means recently have you seen him lately so uh, i have asked a simple question and this is a yes no question by yes no question i means that this question requires an answer either in yes or no so if someone asks you have you seen him lately you can say uh yes i have or no i haven't okay we move on if you want to ask a question and also uh this is a negative question how would you say that you will say have you not paid the fee so uh again you see <clears throat> the word not comes just before the third form of the verb have you not paid the fee and here i think uh i should mention that the helping verb have comes in the beginning and not comes just before the third form of the verb have you not paid the fee uh we use the word not just before paid and uh helping verb have comes in the beginning of the question here uh it is also common to say haven't you paid the fee uh and in that case not will go directly to have because the short form you can't split it you have to use it together so you can say haven't you paid the fee hasn't he come late hasn't he applied for the post haven't you identified the problem okay so uh if we use the short form then not comes soon after has or have otherwise uh not is used just before the third form of the verb okay now uh have you not paid the fee and have you seen him lately these kind of questions are called yes no questions uh sometimes you have to form a question that require a longer answer and usually such questions begin with a question word so if you want to uh ask a question that requires a longer answer then you need to uh add a question word before the helping verb so you start your question with a question word then you say has or have then you use subject the third form of the verb and finally you have an object which is optional 
for example the question word is how long here I'm asking the question word how long how long have you been living here by how long I mean I want to know the total duration of your stay here instead of how long what other questions can you use yes uh, you can use the question words like what what have you done how how have you come how many how many books have you brought how often how long how far uh, so you can have these questions uh, other question words could be why when where where have you been one common question that is asked in English is where have you been uh, so similarly you can ask questions with where when and why okay now we move on to the use of present perfect tense and if you just look at the four pictures here you would see uh, that present perfect tense is used with actions that have finished and uh, so basically present perfect tense is also an action that started in the past just like a past event but it finished uh, just at the time of speaking okay. uh, so we would say I have come he has come so he started coming in the past but uh, he has finished it now okay then you have recent action with present result this this word is really important phrase present result basically present perfect tense uh, is a past event but why do we call it present perfect because this past event always has a connection with the present if I say he came I'm simply narrating a past event but if I say he has come I'm talking about uh, the connection between present and past for example if you go to an office and ask about someone and you say uh, may I meet Mr. Thomas please now colleagues of Mr. Thomas tell you uh, sorry he has just gone out what does that mean he has just gone out means that uh, the result in the present is that you can't meet him okay or if I say you have completed your course you have succeeded in your you have uh, passed in your exam you can the result is that you can celebrate it you have been promoted to the next class uh, so when you say present perfect tense basically it has some connection with the present uh, okay recent action with present result uh, usually the action that has just happened and usually you use the word just with it okay so uh, <coughs> usually we use the word just if something has just happened if something has happened in the recent past and it has its impact or connection to the present we'll use present perfect tense for that for example I have just so we use present perfect tense uh, for actions that have finished for actions that have recently occurred but they have their result uh, in the present they are connected to the present uh, we can also use present perfect tense for actions that are completed and still exist for example if I say I have taught English for five years this means that uh, I have taught it for five years and I am still teaching this means that I started teaching five years ago but I am still teaching if I say I taught for five years did you notice this time I have used simple past tense I taught for five years this means this action is completed and I am not teaching anymore I'm not teaching any longer but if if I say I have taught for five years this means 
I started it five years ago, but I am still teaching. We also use present perfect tense for unspecified past, when we don't know exactly when something happened. So we don't know a specified time of the action. Either we don't know the specified time, either it is irrelevant. For example, if I say, I have been to China, I didn't mention uh, when I went to China. Um, it is unspecified past. Or maybe it is multiple instances. For example, if I say I've been to China, maybe uh, I've been to China many times. Okay, but if I specify the time, then I must use past simple tense. For example, I must say I went to China in 1998. Well, uh, if these things are not yet clear, don't worry because we are going to look at past tense now and afterwards we'll also see the differences between present perfect and past simple tense. Um, so uh, don't just hang on a little and we'll see uh, how to differentiate between the two tenses. Okay, we move on to the structure of simple past tense. This is something that probably you already know. Uh, in order to form simple past tense, we start our statement or a positive sentence with subject. Afterwards, we use the second form of the verb and then object is optional. Uh, for example, the elephant crossed the river. The elephant is the subject here, crossed is the verb here, second form of the verb here, and the river is an object. This structure is called simple past tense. For negative sentences, all we do is we add did not after the subject. And once we use did not, the second form changes into first form. So he did not wait for us. Okay, Remember that this time I'm using wait. I'm not saying waited. Why? Because we have already used the word did or did not with it. Uh, so in order to form negative uh, sentences in simple past tense, we say he did not wait for us. For question, we use did before the subject. And uh, well, you, you don't need the brackets around subject here because subject is not optional, whereas the object is. Anyway, did you try this shirt on? So that's a yes, no question. You start with did. And once again, uh, when we have used the helping verb did, the verb form is converted to first. So we don't say did you tried. Right. It should be, did you try this shirt on? Okay, and uh, if we don't want to ask yes, no question, we want to ask some longer question that requires long, uh, longer answers, we can start our question with a question word. The rest of the sentence remains the same. Did, subject, first form of the verb plus object. All we do is just add question word before uh, the helping verb did. So we can add any question word here. We can start our question with why. Why did you come late? We can say how did you come? Where did you come from? Uh, how often did you visit your parents? Etc. Etc. So you can say, you can use any question word here. Uh, so you see, it is pretty easy to differentiate between simple past tense and present perfect tense as far as their structures are concerned. Uh, but when it comes to understanding their functions, we need to be a bit careful. Let's move on now to uh, finding the differences between the uses of these two tenses. Present perfect simple and past simple. Let's try to uh, differentiate between the two. Okay, we use present perfect simple for unfinished actions that started in the past 
and continue to the present. Unfinished actions that started in the past and continue to the present. For example, we say, I have known Ahmad for 10 years. This means this action of knowing Ahmad started 10 years ago and I still know him. So I will use present perfect tense when I, when I want to give uh, the meaning that I still know him. Whereas if I say I knew Ahmad for 10 years, that means if I use past simple tense, rather than saying I have known, I simply say I knew Ahmad for 10 years. This means that I don't uh, meet him anymore. Uh, probably it means that he moved away and we lost touch. So past simple is used for actions that started in the past uh, but they do not continue to the present. Uh, you can recall earlier I said that present perfect uh, is used for actions in the past that have some connection to the present. Whereas past simple does not make this connection to the present and therefore it is called past. Okay, another difference between the two tenses is, between the use of two sentences is, that present perfect simple is used uh, or present perfect tense is used for a finished action in someone's life when the person is still alive. That means for life experiences. Uh, as I was talking about my life experiences, right? Uh, and I was using present perfect tense for that. So if someone is still alive, he or she can use present perfect tense for, <coughs> uh, for narrating his or her life experiences. But past simple is used for a finished action in someone's life when the person is dead. Uh, so you say, my great-grandmother went to Mexico three times. Whereas if, you, if your bro uh, brother is still alive, you can say, my brother has been to Mexico three times. Uh, so this has been actually suggests that uh, my brother can go there once again. He may or may not go there again. So this has connection to the present. Whereas my grandmother went to Mexico three times means that this action is finished. It does not have connection to the present. So basically, if you don't understand the other differences, keep one difference in mind. And that is if an action started in the past and it has some connection to the present, we will use present perfect tense for that. Otherwise, we'll use simple past tense. Okay, let's move on and look at few more differences between present perfect and past simple. We use present perfect tense for a finished action with the result in the present. So again you see there is a connection to the present because the action finished in the past but its result, its uh, consequence can be seen in present. So if you say I've lost my keys, the result is that I can't get into my house now. So uh, suppose, think of a situation uh, where you arrive at your home and you tell your family members that I have lost my keys. So this means the result is that we can't enter into the house. Um, so instead of saying, I lost my keys, you should say, I've lost my keys in this situation. Whereas for past simple, we use a finished action with no result in the present. For example, if you say, I lost my keys yesterday, it was terrible. This means that the consequence of losing the key is not uh, in the present. It was terrible, but uh, it doesn't have any consequence or any result in the present now. Probably I got new keys yesterday or probably I found them now. Um, therefore, there is no result uh, of this action to the present. Okay, we also use present perfect tense with an unfinished time word. Unfinished time word is something like unspecified time. Uh, that's something we discussed earlier. 
So for example, we say this week, this month, today. Uh, for example, we say, I've seen John this week. I've seen John lately. I've seen John late recently. Okay? But if I use the specific time word like last week, last month, yesterday, a finished time word, I use past simple. I saw John last week. Okay? This week is not a finished time word. This week is still going on. This month is still going on. Today is still going on. Whereas last week, last month, and yesterday are over. So uh, for finished time word, I use past simple tense. And for unfinished time word, I use uh, present perfect tense. OK, now let's have a, uh, a short exercise. And we try to find out which tense is uh, useful here. Uh, question number one is, he dashed there when he was a child. So what should you say? He has lived there when he was a child or he lived there when he was a child? Yes, those of you who say he lived there when he was a child, they are right because when he was a child is the specific time. And this is finished time word. So this time is over. When he was a child, uh, suggests that he is not a child anymore. He is probably grown up. So we will use simple past form, which is lived. We will not use present perfect form, which is has lived. So the right answer is he lived there when he was a child. And the reason for choosing s past tense is when he was a child is a specific time, which is over. Okay, question number two. I haven't seen her since last year or I, have, I didn't see her since last year. Yes, I haven't seen her since last year is the correct answer because of the word since. So we only know that the action started last year but the action still continues even to the present. Therefore, we will use present perfect tense here. I haven't seen her since last year means that uh, last time I saw her last year, but I have not seen her uh, after that. And I'm, not, I'm still not seeing her. Okay. Question number three. They left a few minutes ago or they have left a few minutes ago? Right, this time you would say they left a few minutes ago. You would use past simple. Why? Because a few minutes ago is a finished time word. Okay, We are giving a specific time and this time is over now. It doesn't continue to the present. Therefore, we will use past simple tense. Okay, question number four. She has not been unemployed since she left school or she was not unemployed since she left school. Again, you see the word since suggests that this action started in the past when she left school, but it still continues to the present. Therefore, we will use present perfect tense. We'll say she has not unemployed, sorry, she has not been unemployed since she left school. Okay, question number five. They finalized the contract last week or they have finalized the contract last week? Yes, you are right. We will use past simple. We will say they finalized the contract last week because of the sentence, because of the phrase last week. Last week is a finished specified time in the past. Uh, it is last week. Last week is over. It doesn't have connection to the present. Therefore, we will use simple past tense here. Okay, we continue with the exercise. Question number six is the film hasn't started yet or the film didn't start yet? Those of you who say the film hasn't started yet are right because of the word yet. Yet means so far. So far again tells us that uh, we are still waiting for it. So if you say the film hasn't started yet, uh, started yet, it means that we are waiting for the film and the result in the present is that we are still waiting. So again, 
an action that has result in the present, we use present perfect for it. So the right form is, the film hasn't started yet. Okay, question number seven. She was ill since Thursday or she has been ill since Thursday? Yes, you are right again because of since, we'll use present perfect. So she has been ill since Thursday. Okay, question number eight. I have finished the project last night or I finished the project last night? You're right. We should say I finished the project last night because we have last night which is uh, this time is over and this is specified time. Okay, number nine. Look, someone has left their handbag in the room or someone left their handbag in the room. Uh, we'll use has left because of the word look. It is immediate past and second thing is that probably we are focusing on the result of this action. So if you say someone has left their handbag in the room, uh, probably we should take some action. The result is the consequence of uh, someone's leaving their handbag in the room is that we should find him out, we should find them out. Question number 10. Did you ever go to Rome or have you ever been to Rome? That's right. Uh, probably this was the easiest question because we have been making questions with have you ever. Uh, so have you ever been to Rome is the right choice here, right tense here. Okay, so uh, these sentences should give you some idea of when to use present, sim present perfect tense and when to use simple past tense. Very often in speech we combine these two tenses. For example, we say, have you completed your diploma? And someone responds to it by saying, yes, I have. And then our next question can be, in past simple tense and we can say when did you complete it now because we are asking about time when we must use past simple tense so I repeat the dialogue have you completed your diploma yes I have when did you complete it I completed it last year or I completed it just a week ago right all right, uh, now here we read a dialogue between Henry and Shayla. And you will see, uh, we'll find out which sentences are in past simple and which sentences are in present perfect. And we'll try to analyze why uh, present perfect and past simple sentences have been used here. Henry says, hello, Shayla. I didn't expect to see you here. Right. So, I didn't expect to see you here is the past tense, simple past tense. Oh, I have been here for quite a while. I have been here for quite a while. Uh, present perfect tense has been used because Shayla came here uh, a little while ago and she is still here. So, she uses present perfect tense. When did you arrive? Henry asks the question in past simple because uh, he is asking about the particular specified time, when. Just after lunch is the answer. Henry says, did Patrick pick you up from the station? Now, the time is not mentioned, but the time is uh, connected to this, when did you come? Uh, so it is, uh, as it is assumed that Pe Patrick picked her up from the station. Uh, so we use the past simple tense here because the time is not asked this time. This time it is time is assumed or it is a shared knowledge between the speaker and the reader. A speaker and the listener. Shayla says, no, it was a nice day so I walked. She is referring to this particular time, specified time. So she is using past simple tense. Henry says, have you eaten anything since you have been here? Okay, this time no uh, specified time has been mentioned, so present perfect tense has been used. Shayla says, yes, I had afternoon tea with the girls. This is past tense. Had is the second form of have. Remember, this is not present perfect because we don't have the uh, main verb here. 
had is the main verb. So this is past simple tense. What did you think of Penny? Penny is name of one of the girls. She has grown up a lot since I last saw her. Beca because of the word since she has used, she has grown up. Present perfect tense. And how did you find Rebecca? She didn't join us. I haven't seen her yet. Because of the word yet, she uses I haven't seen her. So this is, uh, it might be pretty confusing in the beginning, but you should practice it and uh, you will soon be good at it. So I would like you to look at this dialogue uh, closely, analyze it, and next time you should be able uh, to use both the tenses in your own, uh, in your own speech or writing. So here, is, uh, here are some practice situations for you. Situation number one is that you suppose that you are a TV anchor you are going to introduce a celebrity or a famous person by giving a list of his or her achievements. Just as the TV anchors do, uh, you introduce your guest to the audience. So you say, uh, now you are going to meet Mr. Vaseem Akram. He has done this. He has played so many matches. He has taken so many wickets. So you can use present perfect tense here uh, to introduce your celebrity. Okay, the second situation is that you are going to write and act out a dialogue combining the present perfect and past simple. You have just looked at a dialogue between Henry and Shayla. So taking that, uh, it as an example and I would also provide this dialogue to you as a handout. So taking it as an example, I would like you to uh, prepare your own dialogue, write down your own dialogue and then find a partner to role play it, to act it out. So with this we come to the end of lecture number 13. Lecture number 13 uh, was about sharing life experiences and in this lecture we learned how to use simple past tense for narrating past events. We learned how to use present perfect tense for experiences and we learned how to differentiate between the two tenses. Hope this lecture has been very useful for you and I hope that you would practice it in your own speech and writing and become uh, and master it. Thank you very much.